Greetings my friends. Welcome to the Galilee in the middle of the winter, February 2017. I'm standing inside of a almond grove. And as you can see, these trees are full of life, pink flowers. Already on the ground are a lot of the petals. They fall to the ground pretty quick. Maybe one week, two weeks maximum, these flowers stay like this. And then they shed all of their flowers and they start producing the fruit. Maybe the video will actually pick up all the bees that are buzzing around doing their bee business. I wanted to make this video to share with you uh, this beautiful time of the year and also to kind of tie in some of the important biblical truths that go with this particular tree. This tree is God's gauge for this land as to when spring actually begins. Unlike uh, in America where the winter is cold and it's dead, in Israel that's when we get the majority of our rain. And so things start coming alive. The grass becomes really beautiful. You would think you were in Ireland. And these trees are the first things that spring to life and they bring about the first fruits of the land. Now significantly, if you remember back uh, in the time of Moses and his brother Aaron, they had a branch from this tree and it wound up going and coming to life. It wound up getting these blossoms. And something significant is happening here in this visualization because later on in the book of Exodus, Moses is told by the Lord God to create the menorah or a candelabra of seven branches. And the branches of the candelabra were to look just like this. And at the very top where these flowers are is where the oil would go in order to light them and to be a lit inside of the inside of the temple. Now, what is interesting about the whole tie-in of the tree and the branches is that after the miracle of it coming to life, in the English translation it is said that the rod or the branch was put inside of the uh, Ark of the Covenant. But that's actually a mistranslation. In reality, it says that it was before it. So you had the ark, and outside of it on the ground was this branch with the flowers. Now later on, after the temple was built, we know that the ark was put inside the Holy of Holies. So if you can imagine in your mind's eye, when you go into the temple, you would see the menorah, which was made of branches that looked like this. And then the, the high priest would be able to go inside to where the Holy of Holies was and this branch with the everlasting blossoming of flowers would be on the ground before it. Now this brings about something interesting. There is in the Tanakh or in the Old Testament a mentioning of a city by the name of Luz. Now Luz is a word that doesn't mean anything in Hebrew but in Aramaic and Arabic it means this. It means an almond tree. And as it's understood, this word for uh, uh, the city, Luz, that it was in on top of where the Temple Mount is today. And that there was a tree there. This is according to tradition. A very large almond tree that the angel of death was not allowed to go near it. That it was a tree of life, if you will. And that any of the inhabitants of that city were protected by that tree. Now, of course, this is a, a nice story. But a lot of times, some of the stories we get are connected to something that is rather real. And many uh, people over the ages have suspected that the Garden of Eden was somehow and around the city of Jerusalem, based upon the rivers that are mentioned. That's kind of another teaching in and of itself. But it's interesting that this tree was located on where the, the, the temple was to go ahead and be built. Now... There is a portion in the scriptures, which is in the book of Jeremiah that I'd like to read to you. It's Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. And it says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. And then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. If you read that as an English speaker, and you read it 10 times or 100 times, it really doesn't make any sense. It, it, it doesn't really complete a thought. 
But in Hebrew, it does. And not only does it complete a thought in Hebrew, it's kind of a, uh, a play on words, if you will. Because you see, the word for almond is shaked. And the word for to watch in this is shakad. They come out of a three-letter root word that, depending on where the vowel uh, stress is, means one thing or the other. So it doesn't mean literally to watch. It's, it's emphasized by the context. So it means diligently. The Lord is diligently watching over His Word to see it to its completion. So it also means to lead. And as we know, the leaders of Israel carried the branch of the almond tree forward with them. So there's a lot of play on words that the Hebrew speaker gets that we as English speakers are kind of lost at. And we read these verses, we don't get the fullness of it. But this is what, what the Word of God is being carried out to its fullness. What is the fullness? In, in context in Jeremiah, it's that he is going to punish Jerusalem for its faith, faithful uh, faithlessness. But for us as believers, considering his carrying out of his word in completion, it means that he's going to do what he promised. And that his son is going to bring us out of this world into the new world, and we are going to tabernacle with him for eternity. So when I think about it, a rod, as it's described in English, or a branch that is dead and cut off from the tree, it had a miracle happen because new life flew out of it. And not only did new life flow out of it, but it was everlasting life. The flowers never died. And you see how quick the flowers die of an almond tree. They're already all upon the ground. Next week they won't even be here. But what does it remind you of? Out of dead wood, new life will come. And that's exactly what the cross is. The cross is dead life. But out of that flowed the first fruits, the almond branch, the life of the flower, the life of the Son of God. And it's sweet smelling and it brings forth the harvest of all the other species. And we're that species. We are what the Lord is going to redeem. So take joy in the fact that you are a child of God, that He is going to bring you into His garden everlasting. And until that time, Pray for Israel, pray for us, and I bid you farewell. God bless.